Greetings everyone and welcome back to 365 Days of Prague. Today we will be reviewing the album The Fountain Beyond the Sunrise by the band Kyrie Allison. Hi, my name's Naomi. I'm an avid progressive rock fan, but I'm a long ways from knowing all the prog albums out there. But this year, I'm gonna give it a try. This is 365 Days of Prog. So this unique album features a lot of different musical motives and stuff like that, but I think the best way to show you what I loved about this album is by letting you hear some of it. So as always, here are some of my favorite bits off the album. <laughs> And I think that's how you pronounce their name, by the way, because it's not written the same as the word Allison. But I did not know them until today, but they are a Prague, Austrian Prague band from the beginning of the 70s and they're really inspired by Genesis. Now this album, The Fountain Beyond the Sunrise, is in format really similar to our first album that we reviewed on here, God Bluff by Van der Graaff Generator, in the fact that it is made out of four sections or four songs uh, I'd say like two epics on each side and it's really kind of cool. I love that format. I love the fact that they keep their songs long and it's really a refresher from a lot of the, the albums we've listened to recently, which featured, you know, a lot of tiny tracks on them, which really didn't add up to anything. So as I said, this album and this band were really inspired by Genesis, like really, really inspired by Genesis to the point where some people say they were trying to copy them. Now, this is a claim to be one of the first, like, you know, copier albums for Genesis. And the style found on here really resembles that early Genesis. And if you had to categorize it, I would say that this album sounds like the area between Nursery Crime and Foxtrot. And a lot of people really love this album for it because it really gives you like another taste of what Genesis would have sounded like if they had made another album in that section of time. And yes, that is to say they actually did pretty much nail the Genesis sound. They did a pretty good, you know, interpretation of it, of their basic heroes, you'd say. Now, of course, a lot of bands went on to try and do what Peter Gabriel and Genesis did, going from Yesterday's Mouse album, which really tried and imitating the type of singing singing to Marillion and even you would even say God Bluff. But this album really stays true to the Genesis sounds and the motives of Genesis and I think that the fact that this album is not by Genesis is sometimes surprising to some people if they don't really know what this album is. But like all albums which don't really, you know, pop off, uh, there are a few flaws to this one and I think the main one being is the production value found on here. The production itself is pretty low and it sounds like all the tracks on here are at least still in their demo stages. Now that is saying a lot. It means they're not finished, they're not like, you know, refurbished and polished to their full extent. They really sound like they have a lot more ways to go. Now if I had to really say, I think that if you'd taken those songs and just played the same exact things, you know, the same notes, the same instruments, but did the production better, I think this album would have gone a lot up. It just would have sounded a lot better. And I don't really know why that is the case. I don't know why the production value is not so good on this album. It really does bug me when I hear it because you know, it's about like the mid seventies and the production and the studios are pretty good. But besides that, I think the second flaw of this album has to be the singing. It's not bad, it's actually pretty good. And I think the singer really tries to go for that Peter Gabriel voice and he does do a good job at it, but he does lack something really important and crucial. And that's the fact that he's Austrian and English is not his native language. And you can really hear that in the nuances of the way he speaks and, you know, like says the words themselves. Now, I am too not a native English speaker and you can probably hear the way I'm talking and it doesn't sound all that 
you know, like right in all the points. I'm sure there are some places which I do things that sound really off and I'm sure that that would translate as well if I were to sing. And no, I am not going to sing. If that's what you think, I am not gonna do that. Thank you very much. Nevertheless, my favorite track on this one is Forgotten Words. Now it's pretty funny because usually I tend to choose one of the longest pieces on an album as my favorite just because I really have a soft spot for long pieces. But for some reason in an album which consists of four pretty long epics, I chose the one least traveled by or at least the shortest one being Forgotten Words. I just for some reason think it's really really good, I really like it, it's really atmospherical and I love the vibe that it gives off. And I think that yes, if it would have been recorded better with better production and mixing, I would love that song even more. But overall, this is a good, even a great prog album. They really did a lot of things well. I'm gonna talk about the cover in a second so you know they had like that going for the prog scene as well. But they did a lot of good things on this album and I'm sure that if this album had a better mixing and production on it, it would have just been a whole lot more enjoyable. But I'm gonna stop rambling about the production and the mixing and everything, you got my point, and we're gonna move on to the cover of this album. Now this just might be one of my favorite covers on this list so far, and you might be asking yourself why, and I think the reason is just because I like this album cover, I don't know why. I think the drawing on here is pretty really lovely. It is made by Karl Hadina now, I don't know who he is, but he's probably Austrian or German or I don't know anything, but he drew something really, really beautiful with really nice, like, you know, symbolism and symbols all around, basically. And it's so nice and it has that really prog vibe to it. And I think it's a cool cover and the usage of colors is also pretty great on here. I love the fact that it's all yellowish and warm, but then you have the logo of the band, which is blue. And speaking about the logo itself, I think it's really, really lovely. I'd have to say that it has that yes logo vibe to it with how the words are written and the letters are connected but it also does take that psychedelic turn of events and really add some interesting and intricate ideas to the logo itself which really flatter it by itself and of course it is really flattering in the context of the entire cover itself so if i had to rate this album it would receive much like the album itself a not so mixed 7 out of 10. i think pretty certain about that rating this is a good album, it's really enjoyable, and of course, as I said many times, better production would have meant a better rating. So hopefully our next album would actually have a better production, and for some reason I'm suggesting that it will, because the next album we're going to be listening to is Francis the Mute by The Mars Volta, a band which I've never heard before and I'm really eager to listen to. But that is about it guys, I hope that you enjoyed this one. And I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll catch you all tomorrow. Bye guys.